This is Twit. Our friends over at 9to5 Google had an exclusive last week that the upcoming Pixel 6 would be running Google's own Whitechapel chip for the first time. Uh, the report was by Kyle Bradshaw, uh, and it mentions documentation that was previewed um, as I clicked away. Uh, that proves the news uh, and is codenamed GS101, uh, which could stand for Google Silicone. Who knows? Um, and it's aiming for a fall release for Raven and Oriel, uh, the, uh, the, the code names for the Pixel 5a, 5g, and the Pixel 6. Um, and Sundar Pichai teased about this in an earnings call last year about a deeper investments in hardware, uh, which could be an allusion to this. Um, and we all, I'm sure we're all aware of what Apple's doing with their M1 um, system on a chip uh, processor in their devices lately. Um, but Ryan, you wrote you wrote all about this. So what more can you tell us about Whitechapel? Like, do you think that this is actually going to come uh, bear fruit for the Pixel 6? Is it something that we're actually going to see? And is Google going uh, kind of uh, to own their hardware a bit more at the processor level? Well, it uh, we're going to have to see because specs for the chip, if if they end up being accurate, did leak uh, last year when we first found out about Whitechapel in I think like April of 2020, um, and we knew at the time that it was going to have some new ARM cores that weren't even released yet. A couple of other things. Right now, uh, because they're working with Samsung, it kind of seems like uh, this could just be an Exynos rebadge. Um, it, although Google at the time, Google didn't say anything, sorry. Uh, at the time last year, we knew that uh, some custom silicon tweaks were, were happening. Google was going to have uh, uh, a few changes specifically for the assistant and some always on components uh, that presumably are different than whatever Samsung's doing. And the analysts I spoke to said that uh, it was unlikely that it was just going to be a straight rip of an Exynos chip. They're, they're doing some chip level customizations or they would just use an Exynos. Um, but I do think we are in for a bit of a surprise and maybe not quite what we're expecting. Um, Cause my biggest expectation going forward is that, uh, uh, you know, whenever we hear about custom silicon designs from uh, companies like Qualcomm or Apple, we, we hear about these leapfrogging improvements, you know, big, big benefits right. and big gains. I'm not sure we're going to get that here um, because there's no custom core. So far as we know, if the information that's leaked so far is accurate, these are just ARM reference designs on top of whatever base Google's building. So think more high-end media tech, uh, low flagship, high 700 series uh, or low 800 series uh, Qualcomm. Is that uh, smart? <laughs> <laughs> Considering, I mean, taking a look at at what Google has done this uh, this last iteration with the Pixel Five being being more more like a, a top mid ranger, let's say, or mid mid to high mid ranger, um, kind of sounds like what you're, from what you're saying, Whitechapel is kind of following in that direction, saying, okay, well, the Pixel the Pixel Six is probably going to be in that in that general uh, range as well, it's just going to be based on a you know a system on a chip that that Google had a hand in building, not necessarily an upgrade. Like, is that smart of Google at this stage when it already kind of has some challenges uh, in creating devices that are going to capture the imaginations of a lot a lot of people? I like Pixel devices, but you know, really the Pixel users are pretty small minority. In total Android ownership, um, I mean, is and that that's problematic? Move? Yeah, yeah um, it is. Yeah. So it it could be a good move. Um, it depends um, on how many units Google's able to sell. And historically, pixels don't sell very well. So the big advantage to doing your own silicon is uh, if you are buying from Qualcomm. And of course, these details are secret. We don't uh, know the particulars behind how much the company charges per chip. But it is rumored that Qualcomm is really price gouging these recent. Uh, uh, high-end Snapdragon chips. And they dropped the price last year on some of the 700 series chips, which is why we saw so many phones with uh, the 765 and uh, you know the, the lower 700 series. But these high-end chips, the 888 and uh, presumably whatever follows, are going to continue to be pretty expensive, I would assume, especially as uh, we're in the middle of the uh, chip shortage, it's only going to get more expensive, not less. So if Google's rolling its own, yeah. they're able to sort of uh, amortize their costs out over however many units they sell. So if it takes them uh, a ton of money to develop this, but it end up, ends up working out to just a couple bucks per unit, they save a ton compared to buying from Qualcomm. 
But yeah. that's not the case if they can't sell enough units. And historically, mm. pixels sell like a couple million, and that's not enough. So it depends on how heavily customized this is. If it is like literally, and the analysts I spoke to didn't think that was the case, but if it is literally just a an Exynos rebadge, then they're basically just buying chips from Samsung, and it'll be no different than them buying from Qualcomm, except maybe they're saving a little bit of money. But if it, it huh. is a truly custom chip, as, as the people I spoke to uh, seem to think, um, then Google really needs to increase its volume in order to make this worthwhile. And and that's the thing is that maybe, you know, like I could see a case for both. Like it could be a rebranded Exynos and now Google is saying the phone is 100 percent Google. Like they're saying like we own the chip, like it, it becomes more of a marketing play. Right. But then if they go for the, the total custom one, they either are planning to reach that volume or are willing to say, take such a crazy bet in the story that it. Uh, tells and competing with Apple and doing that sort of thing, like it, it, like it could be a loss leader for them. Essentially, if they they, if they see the net, the net result in the story, they 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 might not even care about the cash because mm, they're Google. Yeah. They, they have you know how much money they well, have so much. And and they've even said that as much about you know Pixel or or you kind of alluded to that. You know we don't we don't consider. We don't consider too deeply the like overall sweeping success of Pixel devices. We're not looking to be like the number one hardware seller in the world. Although, you know, I mean, maybe they are, and that's just their public facing kind of comment about it. Of course, they would love to sell a lot of phones, but um, they have mentioned in the past that their intention is not to dominate the smartphone space with their devices. Uh, so maybe that that translates over to here as well. It's kind of like, oh yeah, it'll it'll be what it is, and that's that's good enough. It doesn't have to compete toe to toe with the iPhone on performance. That's not the right. point. You know? And then, then the other question is where you see other applications for this sort of chip. You know, like you know, could they, you know, introduce more hardware that leverages it? Who knows? You know, I mean, but you know, they they could have creative ways to get to that volume. Eh. Well, I yeah. think that one of the analysts I spoke to said that uh, that that could be something that it ends up being used for if the bins aren't very good or if Google just has too many of these chips and needs to throw them somewhere. Um, they could disable the big cores and toss them in something else. Uh, the the smaller yep. uh, ARM cores that are in it are kind of similar to like what's in uh, the Chromecast with Google TV. We could see Chromecast running GS101, but who knows? Yeah. Well, yeah. If you, if you just have also, a ton of if you have a ton of chips sitting in a warehouse, you figure out put them in everything. Put them in the watches. Put them in the Chromecast. Put them in. Right? Like, what was well, the yeah. Moto wearable that ended up with the uh, chip that was in the Galaxy Nexus? Uh, yep. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, no, but that was one of them. Yeah, this could be the same thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you know some of the news that I've he heard uh, or read about this also mentions Chromebooks as well. So definitely yeah, a little it could bit be of Chromebooks. Cross pollination across, you know, their other hardware efforts. Yeah. Um, and again, so look I at what Apple's do look at what Apple's doing. You know, like that, that, you know, they're they're taking that investment and applying it across their their hardware. So, yeah. yeah. And this could just be the beginning, as far as that's concerned. Uh, one of the analysts I spoke to uh, thinks that uh, we, I mean, we have Apple rolling custom silicon. We have uh, ARM rolling out a whole custom chip program. You remember the X1 from last year? They're they're going to start. Uh, mm. helping OEMs make custom ARM-based designs. I think the days of uh, single-chip companies like uh, Intel and, to a lesser degree, Qualcomm may be over soon. Mm. If the costs yeah. come down far yeah. enough for development so that this is feasible for Google to do, just a few million units, why would anyone buy from Qualcomm? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting. It kind of seems like that's the uh, that's the path that's being laid right now, for sure. Yeah. Hmm, modems are stuff. still a problem, but. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even Apple hasn't been able to make a modem yet, but. I can make a modem. What's wrong with you, Apple? I make <laughs> modems in my sleep. I got this sweet 2400 baud that fits in my yeah. backpack. So. I roll old school. I'm more of a 300 bodder myself uh, for my phone. <laughs> Who needs Every text bandwidth? message that comes through, it's like. Well, all, all, all my text by message. All my text messages are sent via Z modem protocol. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was a that was a deep cut right there. That was a deep like cut it. for all you B BBS nerds out there in the <laughs> '90s with me. So, 